I have always been fascinated with liminal spaces. I can look at them endlessly, they'll never bore me. I suppose you are familiar with them, but let me try to break it down for you anyway. The definition of the word liminal is a transitional or initial stage of a process. It's a threshold. It can be described as a place that is not meant to be examined, purely made for transitional purposes. The subreddit for liminal spaces puts it like this. Liminal space is the time between the what was and the next. It is a place of transition, waiting and not knowing. Liminal space is where all transformation takes place, if we learn to wait and let it form us. Let's look at an example. Is there anything wrong with this picture? Well, no, it is an ordinary house. You or I could live here. Here's another interior of a house, but this is way different than the first one. Is there something wrong here? Not in particular, but it is a great example of a liminal space. What makes this photo liminal and the first one not? I think it is the fact that you can immediately sense that something is off about this picture. Have you maybe been here before? It might be the lighting, the quality of the photo, the lack of furniture, or even the angle from which this photo is taken. Living in this house would be cool and all, but seems lonely. If only you had a way to distract yourself. Wait, what's that I'm seeing? The greatest mobile game of all time? That's right, this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends has now over 600 different champions, meaning there will always be one that will perfectly fit your own playstyle. One of my favorite factions of champions right now is the Orcs. They fought a brutal war against the Bannerlords, High Elves and Sacred Order and lost their lands, forcing them to become nomadic. If you want to know more about their story, be sure to play the campaign for the entire full story. My favorite Orc champion right now is Robar, as his defense and attack abilities are both amazing. His wild search ability carries a lot of my fights. Raid is a great game to pass the time, it has amazing graphics and the gameplay is also very addicting. Great planning plus strategy always rewards you in the long run. This is the best time to start a raid and if you click my link in the description or scan the QR code on the screen you will get cool bonuses that are worth $30. We're talking a free epic champion, Aina, 200k in silver, 1 energy refill, 1 XP boost and 1 ancient shard. All of these treasures will be waiting on you right here. Use the link or QR code now as this offer will only be available for the next 30 days and for new players. Thanks to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring and let's get back to the video. Now, even though I just told you one, I would argue that there is no true definition to what a liminal space exactly is. This means that not every picture or place you will find on here is going to be truly liminal for your senses, as liminal spaces are very personal. Not everyone will feel the same way or the same kind of nostalgia, but I'm sure there is something in here for everyone. The feeling of liminality is one where you sense that you should not be looking at it, as it is weird, uncanny, disturbing, unsettling, nostalgic, or ominous. I know those are a lot of different feelings, but you will come to find out which one you will feel. So have fun, get yourself a drink, and without further ado, I present to you the Liminal Space Iceberg. Oh, and by the way, if you want to join my cool Discord server, the link is in the description. The Backrooms. Ah yes, the most famous example of them all, the Backrooms. This is a fictional universe that consists out of multiple levels that are usually made up out of liminal space photos. The Backroom started with just one photo, and you probably have seen it before. This photo created a whole lore and eventually more and more levels, and thus creating an infinite large universe of different levels that are all driven by nostalgia and the weird feeling that a liminal space can face. The Backrooms didn't invent liminal spaces, but it did ignite the spark the concept needed. The Lobby The Lobby is another name for the famous Backrooms level, known as level 0. This photo is so important because it's the ultimate liminal space. I remember seeing this photo for the first time and the eerie feelings it gave me. Every true liminal space that you see is in some way similar to this photo. The Lobby and the Backrooms have recently experienced a heavy incline in popularity due to Kane Pixel's amazing ARG series mostly set in the Lobby. If you're a fan of the backrooms or liminal spaces and you have not seen this, I highly suggest that you check this out. I know the backrooms is a lot of lore, but none of it will ever level what this image and short story did. It is the feeling of getting lost, entering a dimension you cannot escape, as it is essentially endless. It is very hard to replicate this feeling, but once you've captured it, you know you're onto something. Super Mario 64 Released in 1996, Mario 64 remains one of the most famous games in history, and for good reason. 
Not only is the gameplay amazing, it is also very revolutionary for its time, as it was the first ever game to feature a camera that could be controlled by the player. Mario 64 feels nostalgic, but can also be very liminal. This liminal feeling really lies in the aesthetics of the game. Nintendo just started working with 3D engines at the time, and it gave the game a very strange look. Stills from it look lonely and empty, but also familiar. The atmosphere is very unique, as everything in the game looks so artificial. It is somehow very comforting. What is interesting about Super Mario 64 is that it always has this empty feeling. Albeit, there are toads and hostile enemies, but the game is very lonely to its core. You explore this empty castle filled with paintings, and you don't really seem to encounter that many creatures at all. I think that this concept in particular is where Super Mario 64 becomes somewhat eerie, as it almost seems to hold some kind of dark atmosphere sometimes. Look at Wet Dry World for example, a generally hated level in the game. Something about it feels extremely off, but you cannot tell what it is. The feeling you feel of this level can definitely be described as liminal. You're not supposed to be here, and you feel like something is wrong. Even though this feeling was probably never intentional, it works. Liminal Space Image Compilations I see these compilations popping up time from time. These videos are usually called Strangely Familiar Places with unnerving music or something along those lines. And that is pretty much all it is. The videos show you liminal spaces and play eerie music under them that adds to the sense of familiarity or strangeness. I absolutely adore these kind of videos. See how you feel after watching this. Liminal spaces recreated in Minecraft. Minecraft is great for making and recreating liminal spaces. It is safe to say that all the famous liminal space photos have at one point been recreated in Minecraft. You can very easily manipulate and change the lighting, resulting in a game being able to create the best ambience for a liminal space. Minecraft is also a nostalgic game, so that helps naturally. I would argue that with its current assets, Minecraft is the best sandbox game for recreating or creating liminal spaces. The End Another very famous example of a classic liminal space. The end is often used in the background's lore, with an interesting story behind the place. The end represents an empty library with the letter spelling the end is near. This photo is in fact real and is taken in a border bookstore located in Orange County, California. The end is creepy because it pretty much represents the end of a human era. Bookstores are becoming a thing of the past, making this image and place look instantly nostalgic. Interestingly enough, this picture was probably taken before the original Backrooms picture. Liminal Archives Welcome to Liminal Archives, the primary global database of the strange and uncanny locations that blur the line between real and unreal. The archivists are the brave souls who venture into the unknown, risking death or worse, to study liminality. Observe how these obscure realities operate and gather data to bring back and add to the archives. Liminal Archives is a lore-based website for both backrooms and liminal space related stories. r slash liminal space A great place for finding photos like this is r slash liminal spaces. New liminal photos are posted here very often and this is also where you will find the most famous liminal spaces. Lurking Danger Lurking Danger might not sound very recognizable, but you might as well know it as level 1 of the backrooms. This image has such an interesting atmosphere. We've all been in such a space, as Lurking Danger seems to be a hallway inside a garage. It is called Lurking Danger because something feels very off. Maybe someone or something is standing around the corner. Chairs Chairs create an interesting dynamic when it comes to liminal spaces, because these photos often contain chairs in weird places. Empty chairs in an empty and usually badlit room are creepy. Look at this empty presentation room for instance. This is usually not how you will experience this room, and that is exactly what makes it weird. The Caretaker The Caretaker is a well-known musician that creates ambient and experimental music. You might know The Caretaker from his album Everywhere at the End of Time, an amazing 6.5 hour long compilation of music that explores the experience of a person with dementia. Everywhere at the End of Time is nostalgic, but also weirdly distorted. If you've ever listened to this, or perhaps the most famous part, it's just a burning memory. You might know what I mean by that. Everywhere at the end of time, and other work by the caretaker is often used in relation to liminal spaces, especially in the liminal spaces compilations. Music by the caretaker is a great addition to the eeriness of these photos. Terminal 4 Holiday Inn Express 
Better known as the Courtyard of Windows, this is an amazing liminal space picture. This courtyard just feels unreal. It is an inverted hotel located in Heathrow Airport, UK. The architecture used for this hotel is just so weird and unusual. This photo gives me some underground bunker vibes, which makes it look artificial. Interestingly enough, this is one of the very few liminal space photos that has people in it, as you see some people through one of the windows. Living room. We have already looked at this photo, but it's still so cool. This almost feels more like a basement than a living room to me. The interior and structure is very American, so not everyone will be able to relate to this picture. Lack of people. One theme that is pretty much essential when it comes to liminal spaces is the lack or rather the absence of people. There are exceptions as you just saw of the courtyard, but most spaces don't have people in them. Take The Office for instance, a very upbeat and funny show. If you were to remove all people, you will get something like this. This photo has a very liminal feeling to it if you ask me. If you were to strip down an office like this from all its furniture, you would get something like this. A lack of people really demonstrates the kind of uncomfortable feeling a liminal space pursues. It might be related to Canopsia, which is a weird atmosphere of a place that is usually bustling with people, but now is abandoned. Canopsia has a feeling and seems to be closely related to the liminal space phenomenon. We might be more prone to this feeling because of the recent lockdown. Think of empty streets, squares, malls and airports. If you are trying to make liminal space photos, maybe try to chase this weird feeling, as it might lead you to them. Elegiac auras. Something that is elegiac expresses or shows sadness. Most pictures in this iceberg contain elegiac auras, as their presence provokes a saddening or even dark feeling. Places you have been to while you're young, something you might have explored endlessly. These elegiac auras exist because you're looking at a place that gave you a feeling you will never experience again. Aesthetics related to liminal spaces. A few well-known aesthetics that are related to liminal spaces are vaporwave, acid wave, and glitch. Vaporwave really plays into nostalgia, so it's naturally related. Glitch and acid wave are very related to each other, as they both rely on a distorted kind of aesthetic. These both play into the feeling of liminal spaces. Anamoya. Anamoya is a nostalgia for a time you've never known. When looking at these photos, you might experience this weird feeling. Many people tend to feel nostalgic, even though they never actually visited the place. And Amoya might be caused by normal nostalgia, as our memory is usually very inaccurate. Who knows, it might also be past life experiences. Flooded subway station. The flooded subway station photo might have triggered a very interesting aesthetic for liminal spaces, as it contains water in a place where there isn't supposed to be water. The photo was taken in a subway in Hamamatsu, Japan. The water in the photo was supposedly very clean, further playing into the weirdness of this flooded subway station. Sanatorium in Gaul. This is an amazing picture, as this pool feels very dreamlike. The water is almost green, and the whole atmosphere is just very eerie. This is, however, a real place, as people have recently found out where this pool is located. A Reddit refer suggested that it might be a swimming pool inside a submarine, which as it turns out, is a real thing. It became later clear that this is a pool located in Ukraine and serves as a spa in a hotel. Washington Square Mall One place you will always definitely encounter liminal spaces in is a dead mall. This photo was taken in a dead mall located in Indiana, and this photo is believed to be from what once was a children's museum. The original photo has 80s vibes all over it, and the weirdly placed squares on the floor make me feel very weird. Your house after moving out. Imagine your house, but without any furniture, just empty interior. How does this look to you? Seeing your house like this might make you feel uncomfortable, or even empty. You're not used to seeing this place like this, you used to live here. Photos like this are really interesting to me, as a house devoid of furniture fits the original description of a liminal space perfectly. It is a transitional space, and you're not really supposed to look at it. Looking at images like this really makes you appreciate the fact that we humans are able to make lonely places feel comfortable, or less uncomfortable, for that matter. Overlook Hotel The Overlook Hotel is the hotel in which Jack Torrance is the caretaker in In The Shining. Jack does this with his wife and son, but gets terrorized by the hotel's disturbing past. The Shining is a great movie with amazing cinematography. As it turns out, the Overlook Hotel is actually filled with liminal spaces. The most famous one in this is where Danny sees the twins for the first time. It is especially the carpet that makes this still very liminal. 
What is interesting about older media and liminal spaces is that the name for the concept of liminal spaces only started being used in the 1990s and became an increasingly popular thing from the zeros and on. As we come to find out, directors like Stanley Kubrick or David Lynch actually used a lot of liminality in their cinematography. The atmosphere and lightning give this disturbing tone and I feel like a movie like The Shining captures this feeling perfectly. The music used in The Shining also brings us back to work by the caretaker, as The Shining uses multiple Al Bowley songs, which is the main inspiration for Everywhere at the End of Time. Vintage ballroom jazz is almost what I would call liminal music, as it feels so nostalgic. Abandoned buildings. The original backrooms photo probably came from an abandoned office building, so you can see why this entry is up here. An abandoned building is a place that once was sprawling with life and now just holds the memories of what once was. It is both that feeling and a creeping unknowingness at work. If you ever find yourself in an abandoned building, try to take some cool photos. 154 Freston RD, Notting Hill, London. This location probably won't remind you of anything, so let's take a look on Google Maps. Does this seem any familiar to you? It might, as this is where the music video for Rick's Astley Never Gonna Give You Up was shot. Now let's take this picture from the music video and remove Rick Astley from it. We now have a very nostalgic liminal space. This picture is honestly so weird to me. Everyone has seen this before, but it feels so out of place to look at it without a dancing Rick Astley. Toys R Us. Toys R Us was a popular American toy retailer that had many stores all over the world. Toys R Us unfortunately declared bankruptcy in 2017 and closed most of its stores in 2018. The closing of these stores resulted in a lot of cool liminal spaces, and most famously, this one. It seems to be an empty Toys R Us store inside a closed or abandoned mall. Blockbuster Like Toys R Us, Blockbuster is another American store that went bankrupt and closed in 2014. Movie stores are becoming, and in a way already are a thing of the past, resulting in creating a quiet nostalgic feeling. A lot of photos taken from both the inside or outside of empty Blockbuster stores appear liminal. Pipe Dreams Pipe Dreams refers to a myriad of photos, usually taken in an empty or abandoned factory, that are commonly associated with Backrooms lore. These liminal spaces usually depict a space with very colorful and weird looking pipes. What makes this surreal is that the fact that it feels like a playground, an environment made for children, but is actually an industrial area instead. Out of Business Imagine a vibrant restaurant like the Krusty Krab or the Chum Bucket. If there was a Spongebob episode where both of these restaurants would close down and get repurposed, it would look something like this. These pictures were posted on r slash liminal space under a post named Out of Business. A show like Spongebob is very nostalgic for many people, so removing all of its exterior certainly creates a feeling of liminality. This is combined with the fact that there is nothing in the background and the sky is just different shades of blue. Single Player Gary's Mod a regular comment underneath Liminal Space posts is that the photo taken looks like a screenshot from the game Gary's Mod. Gary's Mod is a sandbox game that was released in 2006 by Valve and remains popular to this day. There are a lot of mods within the game that perfectly create many famous liminal spaces, such as the living room, the courtyard or the end. Besides this, Gary's Mod itself feels very liminal when you play it alone. The game is obviously meant to be played with many people, just to mess around in and have some fun. Playing and walking around in these worlds alone feels very odd, hence why many people call single-player Gmod a liminal space simulator. Gmod also has many empty dark rooms, which helps. Bo Burnham Inside Many of you will be familiar with Bo Burnham's latest special called Inside. Inside was recorded during the COVID-19 pandemic, making it feel very interesting. The room Bo recorded his special in feels liminal without him because of the setting and lighting. The Oval Office between US Presidents The Oval Office without any furniture or the desk looks very weird. This photo is pretty awesome in my opinion, as you rarely see anything from the White House without any furniture. I also like how the quality of this photo is kinda low and how it perfectly cleaned the floor is. The floor almost makes this photo feel like a still from a Kubrick movie. Deja Vu Area This refers to a photo taken inside an elevator with a poster that reads the following. Deja vu area. This is your first time here. If this platform feels familiar, immediately alert an MTA employee. 
If you see something, say something. This image and poster triggers a weird feeling. If you feel like this poster is SCP related, you are right. It turns out that this is a screen cap from the game Control, an SCP based game. You might have seen this poster before though. Malls. Malls and dead malls will always be an essential place for liminal spaces. People also obsess over dead malls, as the photos they produce are so odd. r slash dead malls has a lot of these photos, and most of them are liminal. A mall is supposed to be crowded, filled with people going about their day. Seeing them like this gives you the weirdest feeling. Grocery store. This refers to a quite well-known photo of a grocery store that was presumably taken at night or after closing time. As it turns out, this photo was taken in 2019 by a Reddit user and was posted on r slash mildly interesting. The photo is of a fake grocery that is located in a refrigeration unit factory in order to test its products. The liminal space photo is cropped as the original has a man standing in it on the left. All the food you see in the picture is fake. Even though this grocery store is fake, it feels very real and nostalgic. We have all been in an empty grocery store at night before, and it's just so calming or unsettling for some weird reason. No wonder why this photo is such a popular liminal space. Liminal space related fears. In most instances, liminal spaces are not viewed in a positive light because they propose a feeling of dread. The most common fear associated with this phenomenon is the fear of the unknown. The only thing you see is a single picture that usually has a story behind it. This story is however unknown. Why is this mall abandoned, or why does this place feel so odd? If you think about it, the whole backroom's creepypasta was entirely based on this fear. The backroom started with a simple, standalone creepy picture that told a simple but scary story. The picture and the text was all we had, and the rest was just imagination. Kinophobia is the fear of voids or empty spaces. Most liminal spaces contain large empty spaces or even lack any objects. An empty hallway or a building that doesn't have furniture might produce feelings of kinophobia. Another very common fear these photos produce is anxiety. Uneasy would be the perfect word to describe it. It is the uneasiness that some liminal spaces produce that makes it so great. We were never supposed to see places like this. Liminal space edits. Not every liminal space is a picture of a real place. Some photos might be edited, CGI, ray traced, or even paintings. Some people believe that all liminal spaces have to be real places, but I believe almost every form of media can be liminal in a way. It is very interesting how most real liminal spaces contain almost no nature. CGI based liminal spaces can contain nature, as they feel and look fake already. Shuki. Shuki is an awesome YouTuber that explains and explores both the history and meaning behind many popular liminal spaces. He has covered many photos such as the Rainbow Funhouse, Liminal Space Pools and many more. I highly recommend you check out his channel if you enjoy liminal spaces, because his videos are very high in quality. Buffer Test I love this entry because many people can relate to this one, no matter where you're from. The Buffer Test is known as a test to measure the ability of focus of your eyes. The patient is supposed to look into a diagnostic machine that will display one of two pictures, one with a field of crops, with a house at the end, and one with a long road that has an air balloon in the end. These two places look pretty weird and liminal. They both look calming and obviously carry a logical sense of nostalgia with them, because unlike most liminal spaces, you actually have seen these before. Stanley Parable. The Stanley Parable is a video game released in 2013 that has been described as one giant liminal space by many. It is a first person exploration game that feels very weird and off. You play as Stanley, a silent office worker who one day discovers that everyone from the building has disappeared. The Stanley Parable almost feels like the first ever backrooms game, before the backrooms were even a thing. You explore many weird and empty rooms with many doors that lead to the next. Even though the Stanley Parable is not a horror game, it might be unsettling for some. Dashcon Dashcon was a fan convention in 2014 for the blogging platform Tumblr. This entry refers to a famous photo of a ball pit that was taken in the convention center. 
Dashcon turned out to be a disaster, especially after many of the anticipated live readings were cancelled. Many people demanded to get their money back, but this could not be done. Instead of refunding, the hosts promised the attendees one extra hour in the ball pit. This story and photo became a meme and is now recognized as a liminal space. The ball pit looks so weird and misplaced, making this image a perfect example of a liminal space, combined with the nostalgia this photo might give you. I Spy You might remember the I Spy books, a franchise of children books with image-based riddles. The objective is to find certain objects in these images, and as it turns out, some of these images turn out to be quite liminal. One of these images got really popular on Reddit, and is actually pretty comforting if you ask me. First photo ever taken. I'm pretty sure you've seen this picture before. This is known as the first photograph ever made, taken in 1826, titled The View from the Window at Lucra. The process for performing such a haunting task took about 8 hours. Interestingly enough, this photo is considered a classic liminal space. The picture obviously lacks nostalgia, but it ultimately has a certain weirdness, but also some kind of magic to it. The picture is quite grainy, but we can make up buildings, a field, a tree, and a sky. Many people believe that the content of the first ever picture doesn't even matter. It would have always been liminal, no matter the location or the objects it was taken of. The Glover Room You might know Scott the Waz as a very cool video game essay YouTuber. A reoccurring joke on his channel is that of the Glover Room, which is described as a room in his apartment. This room is said to contain a copy of the Nintendo 60 forum game Glover, a game that Scott has never played. This photo appears to be pretty liminal. It is an abandoned building of some sorts, but other than that, there is not that much to it. Photos of Corinthia Hotel This refers to photos of the Corinthia Hotel in Khartoum, the capital of Sudan. One cool photo of the hotel is taken from one of the top floors of the building, looking down onto the lobby. This gives a weird feeling, almost similar to the courtyard of windows. Other photos on the website just seem like expensive hotel rooms, so nothing very liminal. Greatest freakout ever bedroom. Do you remember this picture? Chances are you've seen it before, because it is the bedroom in the famous viral YouTube video titled The Greatest Freakout Ever. The video, uploaded in 2009, depicts a guy secretly recording his brother after he found out that his mother suspended his World of Warcraft account. This video is something, but let's focus on this bedroom for now. Pretty liminal, if you ask me. You've probably seen this bedroom before, but if you haven't, it will probably still feel weird. Super Liminal This entry refers to an underrated indie game called Super Liminal. Super Liminal is described as a first-person puzzle game based on forced perspective and optical illusions. Like the Stanley Parable, its atmosphere is based around the feeling of loneliness and emptiness. The game itself is beautiful and has some very interesting looking rooms. Us 2019 Us is an American horror film released in 2019 and was directed by Jordan Peele. The film tells the story of a family that is on a beach vacation and is then terrorized by their creepy doppelgangers. We will get into some spoilers here, so if you still want to watch this film, make sure to skip to the next entry. In the middle of the movie, it is revealed that the doppelgangers come from some kind of underworld, which is made up out of weird long hallways and tunnels. These tunnels have bodies in them, but are also quite liminal, if you ask me. They look very creepy and might even be endless, fitting perfectly with the disturbing feeling of the movie. Nintendo 2DS Camera The 2DS or 3DS camera won't make photos with the best quality, but as it turns out, this quality is perfect for photographing liminal spaces. Look at this cool photo of a bedroom. The aesthetic of the 2DS camera is great and very interesting looking. The pool rooms. The pool rooms could be described as a subgenre in the liminal space community after it gained a lot of popularity. It all started with a backrooms level, known as the pool rooms, which is essentially an infinite maze of these CGI made pools. The aesthetic of these pools is amazing, as it is a beautiful array of clear blue water and white square tiles similar to the ones you would find in real pools. Liminal spaces containing pools were popular before the discovery of the pool rooms, but I believe that this is the best iteration there will ever be. The photos are obviously computer made and thus fake, but they are not fake enough. It makes the pool rooms feel uncanny, but not unfamiliar. This is because most pools do in fact look like this, but are more open and have way more color. 
Swimming pools that kinda look like this do exist, especially this one in a German hotel. Jared Pike. The pool rooms will bring us to Jared Pike, an artist that creates imaginary liminal interiors with CGI. Jared was the one to make the original pool room photos, and they look amazing. All of Jared's art feels like something from out of a dream. Empty Kmart. When a Kmart closes down, it looks pretty sad and empty. This is a place that used to be very lively, filled with people buying and looking for many products in a large store. Pictures like this show us how important furniture and atmosphere is for a place to be lively. If you strip something from both, you will get a depressing but real picture. Empty Sears. This is something that will happen when you see a Sears department close down. An empty Sears looks a bit more like an empty parking garage to me and has in fact a very liminal appearance. Pictures and places like this give a real backroom vibes, which makes perfect sense since most photos from the backrooms are empty buildings. You have been there before, but not in this state. VRChat Liminal Worlds VRChat is weird. I have never played or experienced it, but the worlds inside the game feel very strange. The quality of some worlds is pretty high, but unfortunately, not many worlds are appreciated in the way they should be. People put hours of work in trying to make a fun and cool place, just to find out that no one is showing up. The game is filled with these environments, places that seem and feel abandoned, that will forever exist in the cloud. Exploring these places can be fun, as you will never know what you will find. Leaf Waterworld Leaf Waterworld was an indoor pool in Edinburgh, Scotland that closed down in January 2012. This used to be a fun place, but feels weird now. There is actually a virtual version of the Waterworld, created in Gmod. This mod is actually one of the most popular maps because of the odd feeling it produces. The closing of Leaf Waterworld wasn't without protest, because many people wanted it to stay, with some even trying to bid on the place in order to buy it. It still ended up closing, and was replaced with a soft play area in 2013. The Waterworld still lives on, but only in a virtual way. Baldi's Basics you might know Baldi Basics as a weird horror game, disguised as an education game. The game is very low in quality, and it feels like it's made in a hurry. The game takes place in what seems to be a pretty standard American school, but it gives off strong liminal space vibes. One picture posted on Reddit captures this feeling pretty well. LSD Dream Emulator This is a game that is advertised as a playable dream. It is an adaptation of a dream diary that was released in 1998. This game is pretty rare, as it is very limited in its availability. Dream Emulator was never formally released in the US, only selling a few rare copies on secondary markets for high prices. Interestingly, the obscurity of the game seems to build a cult following. It is not impossible to get this game, but if you were to buy it on eBay, you might have to spend $900, if not more. The aesthetic of the game is very cool. The game was released for the PlayStation 1, but it doesn't look like your typical PlayStation 1 game. The graphics make it that you can basically screenshot anything in this game and you will have a liminal space. Just look at these amazing examples. Anamoyapolis This is a truly amazing game that is being developed right now, and it's set to release this year. Anamoyapolis is a game where you explore liminal spaces, and the first chapter will have you exploring an abandoned pool. Sometimes you will have to solve some sort of puzzle or walk through a non-Euclidean maze. The game looks and plays very promising, as it makes me feel weird while I'm playing it. This is in my opinion the best game right now for Liminal Spaces, and I hope you will check it out as well, as this is something to be excited about. No Players Online No Players Online is a pretty well-known ARG, and it's very cool to play. The ARG plays like an old VHS Quake-style game on an old television. It feels weird and disturbing because you're the only one in this server, but you're still playing Capture the Flag. This game is extremely disturbing, as something like this happens in real life as well, as nothing truly lasts forever. Games and servers will always die out, no matter how many people are playing it. This feeling is quite sad, but it's also unsettling. It is weird to think that the empty server once represented a place that was filled with joy and people who just wanted to play a game. If you haven't tried No Players Online, I suggest you do so. Omega Mart Omega Mart is an interactive art installation created by the company Meow Wolf and it is located in Las Vegas. It is this weird but super interesting supermarket with various cool areas. 
Omega Mart actually has a narrative, and clues to the plot are spread throughout the whole project. Omega Mart could be described as the real version of the liminal grocery store, as it contains the same aesthetic. Especially this refrigerator with what are presumably cola drinks in it is popular in the subreddit, as you can actually physically enter this fridge. The inside looks something like from a dream, it shouldn't be real, but it is. The Truman Show The Truman Show feels oddly liminal. It deals with existentialism and surrealism, and it does this quite perfectly. The ending to the movie is in my opinion as close as it gets to a liminal space, as it gives this weird and unsettling vibe, as there is a fake horizon. Not only is this still liminal, but it also conveys the feeling humanity can perceive sometimes. We don't know whether we're all in some kind of Truman Show, and maybe this is what the edge of our universe looks like, just a door to another world. Images taken from Jones Barbecue and Foot Massage Ed. Do you remember Jones Barbecue and Foot Massage? I sure do. For those who don't, this was a sketch commercial released in 2009 that promotes Jones and his weird barbecue restaurant where he will fry literally anything and also gives foot massages with barbecue sauce. If you have not seen this video, please check it out for yourself as it belongs to internet history. This video is quite nostalgic for some, and this photo is pretty liminal if you ask me. The weird 90s VHS aesthetic really makes you feel that way. LEGO set box backgrounds Some Solar Sands fans might be familiar with this phenomenon already, but it is still very interesting to me. The background I'm showing you are part of LEGO sets, but they look weird. You're not used to seeing them like this, because well, they serve as the background. The main focus is the LEGO set, and the background is purely there to make it feel more lively. To me it's interesting how weird these backgrounds actually feel once you remove all the other attributes, as it's something you're not really supposed to look at. Rooms by the Sea Rooms by the Sea is a painting made by Edward Hopper in 1951. Hopper's art feels realistic but abstract at the same time. This perspective is unusual because it looks like we're in the middle of the sea, as if we're surrounded by it. This does not have to be the case, but I feel like it is. For some reason the sea seems inviting, which is weird. Torquay Rainbow Funhouse One place infested with liminality is the Rainbow Funhouse. This place screams nostalgia, and it has bright colors, slides, bridges, and other funhouse attributes that are all extremely familiar. The funhouse opened its doors in 2001 inside an old converted church. The funhouse closed in 2017, where it became an eerie abandoned play area. Urban explorers loved this place, as the whole area remained inside the church, showing a lifeless area that was once full of children. The church caught on fire in 2019, which caused serious damage to 80% of the church. This place still exists today, but it has changed for good. The entire play area has been removed, as well as the paint. Minecraft Alpha Not many games get as nostalgic as Minecraft. The very first available version of Minecraft released May 17, 2009. Images from the early alpha version are extremely nostalgic, as it shows us a forgotten past. Minecraft is still being played, but today's version is vastly different than the early version. It used to be very simple, an experimental game, just to turn into a huge phenomenon. I advise you to walk around in earlier versions of Minecraft just to feel like what it was like. At this point, Minecraft feels more like an experience than a game. Barnyard Game Barn This liminal space derives from an image taken from the Wii Barnyard game based on the animated TV show. It shows a large but mostly empty barn that has some oddness to it. To me, it is not the weirdest or most unsettling thing I've ever seen, but I can see why some would call this a liminal space. AI-generated liminal spaces Today's artificial intelligence-related technology can become pretty advanced. There is a cool phenomenon called AI-generated art, which are all art pieces that are generated by a program that learned a specific aesthetic by analyzing thousands of different images. AI-generated art can look extremely compelling, because the AI can truly understand what makes or breaks the aesthetic. It doesn't stop with art, as AI is now able to also make liminal spaces. 
These photos look very interesting, but I feel like it definitely has not reached its full potential. This also brings us to the phenomenon of fake liminal spaces, photos that were not taken in our real world. Fake liminal spaces might have more potential than real ones, as the decor is not limited by our world. Windows 3D Maze Speaking of liminal spaces, here's the famous Windows 95 Maze game. This to me feels like a Backrooms level. The 3D Maze game is an amazingly creepy and uncanny experience, as you are never truly able to leave this maze. You can wander here for hours and hours on end and you will never find an exit or anything that even remotely resembles one. You're trapped between the ceiling and the floor, filled with an infinite array of red brick walls that keep on generating the further you go. The objective of the maze is to find a smiley face, but when you touch this, you will be sent to another one of these mazes that has a different, randomly generated layout. The feeling of progression, but then not actually gaining anything, is eerie as you know this game does not have an end. Absol Maze This is a weird one, as it is basically a reskin of the Windows 3D Maze game. The colors are way brighter, there are doors, stained glass, and paintings of the Pokemon Absol, hence the name. This screenshot is actually quite reminiscent of something out of LSD Dream Simulator, because of the bright and calming aesthetic. I really like this picture for some reason, it looks pretty calming. Geometric Lullaby Pink Album There has always been a certain indescribable feeling with album covers. Cover art usually has a lot of meaning behind it and it tries to tell a story. The Pink Album might not be very well known, but the cover art is very interesting and so is its content. The blurry look and the abundance of pink give off this very weird feeling. It feels like the photo was taken in some sort of abandoned mall. The music from this album really complements this art as it holds the same feeling. Fun Zone Indoor play areas are in my opinion a very important part of the Liminal Space collection. Abandoned, empty or both, they trigger a kind of nostalgia and uncanniness. The so-called Fun Zone in New York has spawned a cool liminal space that looks like this. The thing with all these Fun Zones is that they all look like each other as their layout and color palette is the same. Even if you weren't specifically there at one point in your life, you have visited a place similar to this. Rock Bottom This is known as a quite unsettling but also very well written episode of Spongebob. Spongebob and Patrick board a bus to home from Glove World, a glove themed amusement park. They accidentally take the wrong bus and end up in a weird place called Rock Bottom, where they are met by a 90 degree cliff. Rock Bottom is inhabited by strange deep sea animals and, as expected, very liminal. This place is located in the abyssal pelagic zone in the ocean, which means bottomless in Greek. The abyssal pelagic zone is where you will find extreme and total darkness, as this zone starts after descending 4000 meter or 30,000 feet into the ocean. This idea is extremely scary and very well portrayed in this SpongeBob episode. Dark Hallway This is another CGI slash edited picture as it looks very uncanny. This picture was uploaded by user GreyColor42 on DeviantArt without any context, other than the programs he used for making this picture. The feeling these images convey is quite special as this really makes you feel like you're lost. This could be the hallway of a metro station but could also be in a hospital or a swimming pool. Italian liminal space. There's something very special about low quality photos, especially combined with the liminal space aesthetic. Italian liminal spaces are a thing as there are some playlists of these images on YouTube that are supposed to be very nostalgic for someone that grew up in Italy. This one in particular is rather weird as I have absolutely no clue where this image is from. All the information we have is that this image was posted on Reddit two years ago and it has nine upvotes. I kind of like this image because it does clearly represent an Italian apartment. It is also strangely familiar. Gabrielle Salanga If you want to see beautiful and dreamlike art, you should look up Gabrielle Salanga. She is a photographer, filmmaker and 3D artist who is well known for her digital CGI art. The art she creates feels like it's ripped straight out of a dream containing a lot of pink and purple color schemes and usually containing big fluffy clouds. There's something so deeply calming about art like this. 
If I were to close my eyes and were to imagine what heaven looks like, these images might come close. Gabriella's goal is to let the viewer experience a kind of escapism, as her art represents and implies peacefulness and tranquility. All of her artwork is based on her own dreams. Walton Files Backgrounds The Walton Files is a quite popular ARG made by Martin Walls. It consists out of found footage that looks like it is inspired from Five Nights at Freddy's. The Walton Files tells the story of a man named Anthony who finds a collection of VHS tapes by the Bunny Smiles Company. This company is responsible for Bond's Burgers, a place that has many strange occurrences in the ARG. In Martin Walls' video, The Mysterious Houses, we see a myriad of backgrounds that look very fake. It's especially the one that looks like a neighborhood during Halloween that looks weird. This background looks familiar, as if you've seen it in a real kid show before. Jandak Album Covers Jandak is somewhat of a cult artist who releases weird and experimental music. What is interesting about Jandak is that a lot of his music is played with an out-of-tune guitar. This entry refers to his cover art for his album Ready for the House, released in 1978. This is an exquisite album cover, and is obviously a liminal space. It might remind you of your grandma's house, as this seems to resemble the interior of a 1970s American house. Foodland. This image is filled with sadness. This closed down store and possibly abandoned grocery store looks like something from out of a post-apocalyptic movie. I would argue that this is a very underrated liminal space, as this is both so simple and unsettling at the same time. I kinda wanna enter this building, as the interior might hold some secrets. Monster Inc. The Monster Inc. liminal space refers to the main working space in Monster Inc. with the many colored doors. Only this time this place is completely stripped of characters. This picture feels extremely nostalgic and weird. It is very likely that you have seen this place before, but filled with all the monsters from the film. What has happened? The Marbled Rooms. The Marbled Rooms is used as an album cover for the Vaporwave album called Infinity Frequencies Between Two Worlds. Not only contains this cover an amazing Vaporwave aesthetic, it is also liminal. The content of this album and the cover art complement each other very well, as all of these songs are so eerie yet comforting. This place looks like a weird part of an exhibition at a museum that for some reason feels very intriguing, even though it does not look that way. Baggage Room this might be nostalgic for some. The programming for Cartoon Network changes to Adult Swim at 8pm on American television, and this is always met by a short bumper. You might be familiar with The Dawn is Your Enemy, but this was a bumper that was shown at 6am when the programming switched back to Cartoon Network. The bumpers are very weird and sometimes unsettling, mostly made to scare kids away that want to watch TV past their bedtime. One such bumper was the baggage room, a weird photo of what is presumed to be some kind of train station. There's this big door that says baggage room on top of it. The picture is of low quality, and the bumper has this weird vaporwave-esque song playing in the background. I find this image pretty untelling for some reason, as it is unclear what is behind the door. What does the baggage room even mean? What kind of baggage is in there? Crinkly Bottom Theme Park Crinkly Bottom was a British-based theme park that operated in the 1990s. It was based on a TV series called Noelle's House Party that was in a large house in a fictional village. The park only lasted from 1994 to 1997 and is now nothing but remains of what once was a lively park made for kids. What is left of the park looks very interesting as many houses and small buildings are still intact, overgrown by nature. The theme park has been dubbed as a very scary abandoned amusement park because of the decay and rust the structures have been exposed to. Liminal spaces recreated in Roblox. Another great sandbox game used to recreate liminal spaces is Roblox. A myriad of famous and classical liminal spaces have been recreated, both successfully and unsuccessfully. Your last stop. This image has definitely gained some popularity in the liminal space subreddit. I like this picture because we have all been in this situation before. You're on a road trip or a long car drive at night as a kid, and then you stop at a gas station in what feels like the middle of nowhere. This is quite literally the feeling this image evokes, but without the snow. This to me looks very comforting and reminds me of good times, even though it looks kinda cold. Cartoon Network's Cartoon City This entry refers to a certain era of Cartoon Network that had its own distinct bumpers. 
These bumpers showed characters interacting with each other. This liminal space is a very fake and low quality picture of a hallway shown in such a bumper. This photo may be nostalgic for some. Everyone is gone TikTok. This is a TikTok based ARG about a man who is supposedly stuck in an empty Home Depot. He believes that he has found himself in the back rooms, but proves himself wrong by eventually escaping the store. Even though he's outside, he cannot seem to find anyone, but also knows that he's not completely alone. He then proceeds to go home, finds out that his pets are still alive and survives for a while. The final TikTok supposedly shows him filming while laying down with a bright light shining in our face. The Morse code in the description tells us, every good story must come to an end. I'm not gonna lie, this is not that good of an ARG. The idea is interesting, but unfortunately overused at this point. An abandoned Home Depot will have some liminal properties, but this does not capture that. The Amazing World of Gumball House Interestingly enough, this Cartoon Network show has a lot of liminal spaces. The backgrounds in Gumball are made detaining texturing over images of real places, giving it both a cartooning and realistic feel. This photo in particular is Gumball's house stripped of all its furniture. It looks unsettling, as we're not used to seeing the house like this. Liminal spaces in Rugrats games. There is something undescribably interesting about the aesthetic of PlayStation 1 games. The Rugrats games fall into this category, as they came out in the late 90s and early 2000s. Something about the 3D art feels so unnatural, because it, well, it is. The games are based on the Rugrats TV show, which is 2D based. Turning this two-dimensional universe into a three-dimensional one can come over as unsettling. The game, like the show, is very weird, and it has a lot of long, empty and lonely hallways. Spongebob Gone Title Card This is a very interesting and almost Twilight Zone-esque episode in Spongebob. Gone is an episode in which Spongebob finds out that he's the only one left in Bikini Bottom. The entire town is deserted as his deeply saddened Spongebob. He prints out his own driver license and has some fun, but he feels the loneliness in the end. It is later revealed that everyone in town was gone because of the National No Spongebob Day, a truly sad reveal. The real horror of Gone lies in the title card of the episode. Most title cards to the show are very colorful and use big letters. This one is very different, as the background is just an underwater abyss, an endless open stretching space. This title card is pretty disturbing compared to others, as it truly makes you feel hopeless. Not only is everyone gone, but you're also facing a desert of despair. KC. This image is very unsettling. The picture comes from Reddit, posted under r slash cursed images two years ago. I am not sure what the title KC means. I don't know what this man wants. I don't even know if it is a man. Many stories that are related to the backrooms lore have been written about it. One entry calls him the Numbed Man, an entity that gets stronger the more you read about it. If you read the entire page, it's already too late. Anna Music Pipes Anna Music is a company known for making computer animated music. They've released different DVDs with track lists, all containing different songs and animations. These animations remind me of these early internet ray tracing competitions, where people made artwork using 3D shaders. Early art and animation like this can look pretty uncanny, but in a very intriguing way. It is, however, any music's pipe dream that really captures this uncanniness well. The animation takes place in this weird pinkish room, and obviously there are a lot of pipes. The music video itself is quite jolly, but the animation just has some kind of unnatural aesthetic to it. That hurts. You might know this meme. It was a man falling through the roof of a building and then casually greets his co-worker while lying on the floor as if nothing happened. This liminal space we're looking at shows the store before this incident. The image is calming because I like the simple design the store has. There are not that many liminal spaces seen through a security camera, but this image proves that something like that can definitely work. The last day of Target. I like Target. It has everything, it's convenient and just feels nice. What you might not know is that Canada used to have Target stores, but those failed and closed down in 2015. Target actually lost a billion dollars in Canada because of empty store shelves, high prices and poor customer satisfaction. What we have here is a photo that is known as the last day of Target. It looks sad and empty and it is missing all its furniture, shelves, products and people. 
Its purpose was to resemble a big store filled with people shopping, a kind of comforting place. When we remove those attributes, this is what we're left with. Bedroom in Arle by Van Gogh. There is no doubt in saying that Van Gogh is truly one of the greatest and most diverse artists that has ever lived. His art is amazingly detailed and really shows his own perceived reality. When looking at the timeline of his art, you can see the art of a man whose mental health keeps declining, leading to a dark end. This obviously happened in the end and deems important to Van Gogh's legacy to this day. You might be familiar with a few of his most famous artworks, such as A Starry Night, The Potato Eaters, Café Terrace at Night, or Sunflowers. One artwork in particular, The Bedroom, always seems to return when Van Gogh is talked about. Van Gogh painted the bedroom two years before his death, and one year before he was committed to a mental asylum. The bedroom is most definitely a liminal space and can be compared to CGI or edited liminal spaces. Realism was clearly not Van Gogh's goal, as the painting has many rigid lines and a very awkward perspective. For me, looking at this is appealing and comforting, but the painting also conveys a certain sadness. This image is what Van Gogh saw through his very own eyes, an empty bedroom filled with lonely memories. However, the bedroom feels like a real place, which it ultimately was. The iceberg that sunk the Titanic. This is a very interesting looking image. The iceberg looks small on this photo, but it's about 400 feet or 121 meters long. The iceberg was photographed on April 15, 1912, one day after the sinking of the ship, without the photographer actually knowing that this was the iceberg that sunk the Titanic. The man noticed some red paint on this iceberg and then later made the connection that this iceberg did in fact sunk the Titanic. There is a certain creepiness hidden inside this image. We are familiar with the fact that the iceberg is very big underneath its surface, so you do feel that uncertain paranoia when you look at this image. It is also very old and looks somewhat fake to a point where this photo looks like a still from an old animation. Jeff Browse approaching nowhere. Jeff Browse is a photographer who likes to capture empty rural landscapes. Approaching Nowhere is a book that shows his photography, in which he shows the loneliness America contains. Browse's aesthetic is classic liminal. His images look like they're trapped in the past, stuck in a time. They're empty, lonely, but in a way nostalgic. Whether it is a gas station, a motel, train tracks, the feeling he's trying to communicate works. Jack Stauber's Opal Opal is a visual and musical piece of art made by Jack Stauber that was released on Adult Swim. The video is made with claymation and has a VHS style. It follows a young girl who investigates a mysterious and possibly haunted house across her street. The video has a lot of meaning, symbolism and theories behind it, so me talking about it will never do it justice. The establishing shot of the house is a very cool looking liminal space as it looks so simple. This feels weird, as we don't know what is happening inside this house. This photo is reminiscent of old claymation cartoons. R Plus 7 R Plus 7 is an instrumental album released by Daniel Lopatin. Its content is very interesting to say the least. Its cover art is surprisingly liminal, as we see what looks to be the inside of an empty house. The house has a window, a door and a tall brick that feels like it's supposed to represent a human. We gotta get Spongebob back. This liminal space is derived from a pretty popular Spongebob fan animation called We Gotta Get Spongebob Back. The animation follows Squidward, who wants to find Spongebob. Near the end, he starts to hallucinate and ends up on this weird CGI island. This island looks very liminal and in a way reminds me of the weird 90s CGI videos you see when you go to a bowling alley. Ender user 89 rooms folder. This entry refers to a certain deviant art user called enderuser89. One folder called Rooms contains classic liminal spaces with a few that you might have seen before. I really like this infinite empty office space photo with the no smoking sign. The architecture of this building is just so uncanny. It does not make any sense whatsoever. An empty basement like this gives me more horror vibes than liminal space vibes, but I guess in a way it works. Another one that stands out is this image dubbed Snowy Stairs. This really feels like a place I have seen before. It looks extremely cold but also comforting, as the stairs provide a way to progress in this landscape. Pepper's Playhouse Pepper's Playhouse is a world in Roblox that promises to be an endless experience of nostalgia. 
It has very bright colors and plays on the abandoned play area aesthetic. The entire setting is quite unnerving as you don't know what your next destination will be. The horror lies within the unknown rather than jump scares or loud noises. This is an essential concept when it comes to liminal spaces. r slash former pizza huts. This is an entire subreddit dedicated to, well, former pizza huts. This can mean that the restaurant has either been rebranded or is now completely abandoned. It is very interesting to see that there are a lot of pizza huts that do not last long. Pictures like these are a memory of the past, as they capture a place that once was, and now is gone or completely different. To be honest, I don't know which one of these is less comforting. To me it serves as a reminder that not everything is meant to last forever, nor will. There will always be an end of times, a change, a different picture. Bluey Backgrounds Blueys is a kid's show that follows a blue puppy. The show contains some interesting backgrounds. The backgrounds in the show are colorful and very detailed, but appear liminal to some when you remove its foreground characters. The liminality might lie in the safety the image should provide. Something can become so comforting to a point where you feel the opposite, as this comfort changes in discomfort. David Lynch David Lynch is undoubtedly one of the most important filmmakers of our time. Lynch has played around with liminal spaces long before the turn was ever coined. It is especially his show Twin Peaks that contains a lot of out-of-this-world aesthetics. Twin Peaks has a so-called extra-dimensional space that contains many spirits. This space is either called the Red Room or the Waiting Room and consists out of infinite rooms and hallways. This is probably sounding really familiar as this looks more and more like the back rooms the more you learn about it. You can definitely say the back rooms are inspired by the Red Room. The entrance to the Red Room is located in a forest called Glastonbury Grove and it looks like a well. Entering this will lead you to the hallway with red curtains as walls and a statue of Venus de Milo. Then we have the waiting room, a large room with the same black and white floor pattern and three armchairs. This is where most of the scenes set in the Red Room happen. The Red Room to me is extremely liminal. It looks very unsettling and creepy and I might have been there in my dreams. Most of Lynch's movies have some liminality to them. He really knows how to play around with setting and lighting in the room, creating a very uncanny image. Petscop Petscop is a fictional video game that serves as a very popular ARG. The ARG follows Paul, a guy who makes Let's Play videos about this weird PlayStation 1 game. And its actual true meaning remains a mystery to this day. Part of Petscop's appeal comes from its unique atmosphere, enhanced by the PlayStation 1 aesthetic. We have already talked about how PS1 games have this weird aura that feels very liminal in a sense. It is both the Nintendo 64 and the PlayStation 1 aesthetic that uses low poly 3D computer graphics, meaning the animation has a relative number of small polygons. This style was invented in the 90s and not only remains popular today, but is also extremely nostalgic for people that grew up with it. Petscop takes this nostalgia and makes a lot of its spaces feel really liminal, as it is reminiscent of older video games. The Lobby Image Origin Ah yes, the lobby, again, the essence of liminality. Backroom's lore is interesting, but it will never reach the disturbingness the original photo holds. Finding the photo's origin is probably not impossible, and we have come close a few times. People have found possible locations, related places, and photos in which we might be able to spot the location in which the image was taken. I believe that its true origin will be found one day, but it might be better if its true location remains a mystery. Worlds.com Worlds.com or World Chat is an online virtual reality based chat room or MMO that was launched in 1995. This game is still alive to this day, but feels pretty weird. You can visit a myriad of player-created worlds and dimensions, and some of them are extremely liminal. I for one love this liminal forest, as it feels like an uncanny backdrop for a video game. Worlds.com has been described as the backrooms of the internet, a looking glass in the past that is somehow still up and running. Games and apps like this are artifacts, and I don't think there's a better way to put it than this reddit comment. What really gets me is the idea that if reality is truly just a culmination of outside stimuli, then the virtual world is every bit as meaningful as the real one. 
For every Minecraft world, for every EmptyWorlds.com world, for every abandoned Sims game, for every bit of lost data, there's a deficit in the prime reality. These images are no different than those of the Stonehenge, Machu Picchu, the Colosseum, the ruins of Crete, or the ancient city of Babylon. The only difference here is that there is no decay, leading to a strange, transcendent, dreamlike appearance. Your local Bradman. This entry refers to a video series called Purga Liminal, where the YouTube channel Your Local Bradman explores a fictional otherworldly RPG. This RPG has a lot of weird and mostly David Firth inspired monsters, set in a very liminal space esque room. This would be a pretty scary game, as the music combined with the graphics and aesthetics are terrifying. The rooms the player progresses in feel like good backrooms levels, and are always filled with these weird creatures. The photos used in Umbilical Cord Guy's Serious Iceberg. This is a very serious iceberg. It explores very interesting topics such as humans or aliens, the hot war as opposed to the cold war, and one that's really far down. When I was a kid, I used to think that Mario was saying Mexico instead of let's go. Which if you think about it makes sense. All with all, this is a pretty good iceberg, but I'm really interested in one particular photo on the sidebar. I like this image as it's simplistic, but still fits the theme of this weird iceberg. It's just a photo taken in a backyard, but there's something ominous about it. I feel like there might be something hiding behind that fence, something that can appear at any moment. What happened to the population.jpg? It feels like another one of those weird, intriguing and liminal album cover arts. Interestingly enough, we don't really know where this image is from or what happened to the population. The only source I can find is that this was uploaded to the Liminal Space subreddit. One way to interpret this is that this lonely block is either a human or an object that is left behind in a decaying world. If all humans were to disappear, buildings and structures would still stand, but will ultimately decay and break down. I believe that this is a visual presentation of what loneliness feels like, enhanced by a title that suggests a post-apocalyptic world. Experimentum Films Experimentum Films is a pretty unknown YouTube channel that makes weird ARG-esque videos. One of them has Mario dancing in a weird room, and another one is a car driving on a road in the void. His first, and presumably his best video, is called Pool, and is very reminiscing of old Pixar animations. It looks interesting and is extremely underrated in my opinion. Liminal Spaces seems to be Experimentum's aesthetic, and I believe he's onto something. Rolf Clevenger's Iceberg Maybe not the most liminal of spaces, but I think we're all familiar with this photo. This is THE iceberg photo, taken by a photographer named Rolf Clevenger. This image is created by composing different images, and is intended to be a work of art. The image has come a long way, especially considering this current trend that loves to use this image, both in charts and thumbnails. There is something interesting about this photo, something ominous maybe. It feels real, but something feels kinda off at the same time. Spartan Dash This is an artist that makes great liminal space music. The cover art is also amazing, as its aesthetic aligns with the content of the music. What Disney World would look like abandoned. This is an older YouTube video, released back in 2010. It depicts Disney World, but unfortunately, abandoned. The image looks saddening, as this is supposed to be a place full of happiness and bliss. It is fascinating to think that a scenario like this is not inherently impossible, as natural disasters such as hurricanes exist. Visiting an abandoned place like this would be extremely terrifying, as it has so many big buildings and attractions. The longer a place like this is left alone, the more and more it decays. This decay will go on until you reach a point where Disney World is unrecognizable. What you have left are the ruins of an old place, where many memories have been created. Time seems to be humanity's biggest enemy here. r slash chairs underwater Chairs underwater is an amazing but niche subreddit. You might wonder where the idea of posting pictures with underwater chairs came from, but it might be related to the fear and fascination for thalassophobia and submechanophobia. The one is the fear of deep bodies of water, and the other one is the fear of submerged objects or machinery. Chairs underwater look weird because, well, they don't belong there. One photo that probably spawned this trend is this photo that a diver took of a single chair at the bottom of the ocean. 
This image is extremely mysterious, as this chair is a type of chair used in schools, so it's very weird to find this at the bottom of the ocean. Submerged objects carry this weird feeling with them. Look at this car, for instance. Dreams and nightmares that have unique liminal spaces. Liminal spaces usually feel like they're taken from your dreams. But if you think about what your dreams look like, what do you remember? Personally, I can remember exploring empty hallways, houses, castles and offices. The liminal aesthetic is inspired by the aesthetic that most dreams carry, so all of this makes sense. If you look at art made from experience out of dreams, you will see that the art pieces like this have a lot of common with liminal spaces and liminality. But are there actually liminal spaces that are unique to your own dreams? I believe so, but I also feel like most of the spaces would be inspired by things you have seen online or in the real world. Our brains are familiar with different architectural structures and concepts because we're used to seeing them. Recreating them would not be a problem, so I think this is definitely possible. Other unknown liminal space image origins. Liminality seems to be a style of image that remains vastly underexplored. There are undoubtedly a lot of liminal spaces that have yet to be found or identified, as the possibility for them seems almost endless. What is fun about this concept is that there are a lot of images that remain unidentified, and finding out where these photos come from is always interesting. Take the lobby for instance. So many people have searched for its origin, but it remains a mystery to this day. Truth is, is that a lot of these photos are liminal because of their mysterious nature. It looks familiar, feels familiar, but you've never actually been in that exact place. And of course, most of these places do not even exist. Many of these photos have been made with CGI, created in Blender, or have been heavily photoshopped. Liminal Archives is an FBI experiment. Imagine simulation theory is real. It would not be weird for there to be a glitch in the code, an error. This error could be the back rooms, it could be the red room, hell, it could even be the Epsil maze. What if these dimensions were to exist? This entry suggests that the entire site of Liminal Archives is a way for the FBI to recruit people for what is really out there. If alternate dimensions were real, we obviously would want to explore them, don't we? Conclusion And there we are. We have looked at so many different liminal spaces, so you might feel totally overwhelmed. I have come to find out that defining the term liminal space is extremely difficult, as some personal concepts come into play. Transitional spaces being liminal makes sense, but isn't every place we visit transitional in the grand scheme of things? You can even go as far and argue that your birth is A, where you came from, and your death is B, where you are going, and that everything in between is transitional, a journey of life if you will. Nostalgia is such a strong feeling when experienced right. We all know how it feels, but the feeling itself is rare. Going back to the good old days is not possible, but reminiscing about them sure is. Most of the time the line between comfort and uncanny is blurred, as pictures like this makes us feel multiple things. Liminality is art, and art should be appreciated, as it is a reminder that we humans are able of making amazing things as long as we have the right mindset. Wow, we actually went through the entire thing. Thank you all so much for watching all the way through the end, it really means the most. I will be working on another video, so be sure to subscribe if you want to find out what that's all about. I hope you have a great night, and I will see you later.